So our project is going to have an LS3 in it and this LS3 is going to have the uh, 4L65 E transmission and we are going with the, uh, a, an adapter to the tail shaft here then we'll have a two-piece transfer case on that. We'll be using the customer's two-piece transfer case out of his Land Cruiser to adapt to that. So the LS3 um, mated with the automatic 4L65E is all GM and uh, that will be swung in and we'll give them ma maintenance free, good service, good power, all that kind of stuff. So watch as we swing this into the uh, FJ62. All right, uh, we have the LS3 here, and I showed you the, earlier the uh, 4L60, uh, 4L65E transmission, and we have the transfer case out of the original Land Cruiser, bolted to the adapter from an ad advanced adapter to make it so that the uh, 4L65 will talk to the Troya transfer case here. And uh, the transfer case is a two-piece transfer case, has a vacuum actuator on there for the uh, four-wheel drive. Inside there, um, it's all stock and whatnot, so it was in fine shape. We didn't have to really do any sort of rebuild at all on that. So here it is, and we're going to be swinging it into the engine compartment shortly in order to do the mock-up for motor mounts. We are into the front of the serpentine belt conversion for this LS3, and in years past, I think we've uh, run a GM type of stock factory system. This time we're using a company called Dirty Dingo, and Dirty Dingo is a nice company that does a uh, front conversion for the LS3 and allows us to kind of rearrange some of the uh, locations of the alternator, York compressor for the AC. So we have our alternator here. We have our really nice mini York compressor right here for the AC and we just got in our power steering pump that goes over here in reservoir that's going to allow us to you know have room on this side when we're doing an FJ40 we're more concerned about the steering shaft but on this FJ62 the steering is all over here on this side fully out of the way so we don't have a worry there but needless to say we are going to run this kit and uh, we're liking how it's installing right now it seems to be pretty easy uh, a lot of the modules and whatnot are already installed over here for wiring. He's doing some of the plumbing work for cooling lines and things like that and AC lines right now. One of the last things to go on will be the radiator here in front and then we'll have a fan as well, electric fan in the front of this thing. So that's uh, allowing us to kind of get to a point where ultimately we can, um, we're going to be pulling it back out, cleaning up the interior here and then reinstalling it. Okay, so I'm underneath the uh, Land Cruiser, and what I'm showing you now is a fuel filter and uh, the new fuel pump located up on the right side of the frame rail. And we've run brand new stainless steel fuel line all the way down to the front. And the reason being, as I said before, is that we need a, a larger volume uh, amount of fuel that's brought to this engine compared to the straight six stock engine that was in there before. So that's causing us to have to redesign some of the fuel. And uh, we're using uh, some, uh, some flexible like braided line as well in here where we have these sweeps. And then other places we're putting in a, a nice union here and then going down uh, or compression fitting in order to get up to the front here of the engine as well. The other thing that we've done and, and you said back, maybe it's harder to see is to um, locate the uh, cross member that goes underneath the transmission and you can see that we have a brand new isolator slash uh, insulator slash uh, motor mount that will hold the transmission right there and uh, the adapter and then it comes up to a very stock location here so we've uh, been able to keep it in, in a stock location which is great so we're, we're excited about that which makes it so that the uh, installation and or future work that happens is very stock and it isn't custom and it doesn't hang very low on the uh, overall frame here. So the last thing we're going to be having uh, the front drive shaft goes right back in in its stock location and its length and the back one is going to be a little bit shorter we're going to have that custom made back here so that all works out. But needless to say uh, things are going along quite nicely underneath. Alright you can see a lot of the engine coming to together here I think the last thing that we're waiting for 
is the uh, fan. We ordered a dual fan, uh, cooling fan for the radiator and it turned out to be just a little too big. So we have a, another one arriving today that will be the proper size for it. And we're using a, a really nice aluminum radiator, four row uh, aluminum radio, uh, excuse me, aluminum radiator. And uh, this will allow uh, the cooling capacity for this LS3 to be ample. We also have cleaned up the inside of the uh, engine compartment here, as you can see. And we have the battery in, a lot more wiring has been done, plumbing for the AC is done. So a lot of the, uh, as we say, plumbing is complete here for this project. Hard to see with the lighting here, but uh, one of the requests that we had was to put in a new uh, audio system and uh, that's what we're doing we're putting in new speakers front and rear front doors rear quarter panels we're running a, a five channel amp though we're not going to run a subwoofer right off the bat but we do have that option down the road if we have to and we're doing a bracketry system to hold that amp into the quarter panel and then we're going to be putting the, the speakers in and a head unit in so watch as we do the wiring you can see the Mo's uh, doing a really heavy duty cable to get to the uh, wiring for the amp itself running RCA cables all this will go up towards the front of the head unit and we'll show you that as well and I think we've also um, shown but we'll probably show more detail with the complete gauge cluster custom gauge cluster that we have in there as well again one of the areas that we have maybe shown earlier but uh, is the front driver's side floor which has pretty much a large gaping hole here we are going to be cutting out this floor pan and installing a new floor pan in order to get around this uh, rot here so that's really the worst of it the rest of it's in really excellent condition but it's just an oddity that we have this right here maybe there was a leak down the a pillar at one point in time which was causing the water to just sit in a pool there so we'll be taking that taking care of that as well okay so uh we have the dash all back together uh we have the uh head unit in and that's by kenwood we also have our custom gauges here which are all lit up which look fantastic it's hard to see maybe a little bit there but uh, has the logo, Cruiser Solutions, and uh, yeah, red needles, really sharp. And uh, we also have uh, all of our speakers in the doors. Wires are all run. And uh, last speakers to go in are the ones in the rear quarter panel here. And we have our amp, our five channel amp over here, nicely uh, on this uh, support bracket, buried behind this quarter panel. Easily accessible, quarter panel will go back on, so either way, we're uh, making good progress. All right, so this morning is a big morning here for this LS3 uh, conversion. It's the startup, rough startup of this project, and uh, we're just going to do a real quick uh, startup remotely here uh, outside and uh, get it running for a second because it will be going down for uh, an exhaust. We're not going to really be running it too long, and uh, we found that uh, we're in good shape with it, so just do a quick startup. So that's our rough startup. Uh, it is the uh, open header there, so it makes it quite loud. But uh, needless to say, it is alive. And our next uh, stop will be down to the exhaust shop here for uh, an exhaust. <laughs> 